Chapter Six of Persuasion. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Judy Guinan. Persuasion by Jane Austen. Chapter Six. Anne had not wanted this visit to Upper Cross to learn that a removal from one set of people to another though at a distance of only three miles will often include a total change of conversation opinion and idea she had never been staying there before without being struck by it or without wishing that other elliots could have her advantage in seeing how unknown or unconsidered there were the affairs which at kellynich hall were treated as of such general publicity and pervading interest yet with all this experience she believed she must now submit to feel that another lesson in the art of knowing our own nothingness beyond our own circle was become necessary for her for certainly coming as she did with a heart full of this subject which had been completely occupying both houses in kellynich for many weeks she had expected rather more curiosity and sympathy than she found in the separate but very similar remark of mr and mrs musgrove so miss anne sir walter and your sister are gone and what part of bath do you think they will settle in and this without much waiting for an answer or in the young lady's addition of i hope we shall be in bath in the winter but remember papa if we do go we must be in a good situation none of your queen squares for us or in the anxious supplement from mary of upon my word i shall be pretty well off when you are all gone away to be happy at bath she could only resolve to avoid such self-delusion in future and think with heightened gratitude of the extraordinary blessing of having one such truly sympathizing friend as lady russell the mr musgroves had their own game to guard and to destroy their own horses dogs and newspapers to engage them and the females were fully occupied in all the other common subjects of housekeeping neighbors dress dancing and music she acknowledged it to be very fitting that every little social commonwealth should dictate its own matters of discourse and hoped ere long to become a not unworthy member of the one she was now transplanted into with the prospect of spending at least two months at upper cross it was highly incumbent on her to clothe her imagination her memory and all her ideas in as much of upper cross as possible she had no dread of these two months mary was not so repulsive and unsisterly as elizabeth nor so inaccessible to all influence of hers neither was there anything among the other component parts of the cottage inimical to comfort she was always on friendly terms with her brother-in-law and in the children who loved her nearly as well and respected her a great deal more than their mother she had an object of interest amusement and wholesome exertion charles musgrove was civil and agreeable in sense and temper he was undoubtedly superior to his wife but not of powers or conversation or grace to make the past as they were connected together at all a dangerous contemplation though at the same time anne could believe with lady russell that a more equal match might have greatly improved him and that a woman of real understanding might have given more consequence to his character and more usefulness rationality and elegance to his habits and pursuits as it was he did nothing with much zeal but sport and his time was otherwise trifled away without benefit from books or anything else he had very good spirits which never seemed much affected by his wife's occasional lowness or with her unreasonableness sometimes to anne's admiration and upon the whole though there was very often a little disagreement in which she had sometimes more share than she wished being appealed to by both parties they might pass for a happy couple they were always perfectly agreed in the want of more money and a strong inclination for a handsome present from his father but here as on most topics he had the superiority for while mary thought it a great shame that such a present was not made he always contented for his father's having many other uses for his money and a right to spend it as he liked as to the management of their children his theory was much better than his wife's and his practice not so bad i could manage them very well if it were not for mary's interference was what anne often heard him say and had a good deal of faith in it 
but when listening in turn to mary's reproach of charles spoils the children so that i cannot get them into any order she never had the smallest temptation to say very true one of the least agreeable circumstances of her residence there was her being treated with too much confidence by all parties and being too much in the secret of the complaints of each house known to have some influence with her sisters she was continually requested or at least receiving hints to exert it beyond what was practical i wish you could persuade mary not to be always fancying herself ill was charles's language and in an unhappy mood thus spoke mary i do believe if charles were to see me dying he would not think there was anything the matter with me i am sure anne if you would you might persuade him that i really am very ill a great deal worse than i ever own mary's declaration was i hate sending the children to the great house though their grandmamma is always wanting to see them for she humours and indulges them to such a degree and gives them so much trash and sweet things that they are sure to come back sick and cross for the rest of the day and mrs musgrove took the first opportunity of being alone with anne to say oh miss anne i cannot help wishing mrs charles had a little of your method with those children they are quite different creatures with you but to be sure in general they are so spoiled it is a pity you cannot put your sister in the way of managing them they are as fine healthy children as ever were seen poor little dears without partiality but mrs charles knows no more how they should be treated bless me how troublesome they are sometimes i assure you miss anne it prevents my wishing to see them at our house so often as i otherwise should i believe mrs charles is not quite pleased with my not inviting them oftener but you know it is very bad to have children with one that one is obligated to be checking every moment don't do this and don't do that or that one can only keep in tolerable order by more cake than is good for them she had this communication moreover from mary mrs musgrove thinks all her servants so steady that it would be high treason to call it in question but i am sure without exaggeration that her upper housemaid and laundry-maid instead of being in their business are gadding about the village all day long i meet them wherever i go and i declare i never go twice into my nursery without seeing something of them if gemma were not the trustiest steadiest creature in the world it would be enough to spoil her for she tells me they are always tempting her to take a walk with them and on mrs musgrove's side it was i make a rule of never interfering in any of my daughter-in-law's concerns for i know it would not do but i shall tell you miss anne because you may be able to set things to rights that i have no very good opinion of mrs charles nursery-maid i hear strange stories of her she is always upon the gad and from my own knowledge i can declare she is such a fine dressing lady that she is enough to ruin any servants she comes near mrs charles quite swears by her i know but i just give you this hint that you may be upon the watch because if you see anything amiss you need not be afraid of mentioning it again it was mary's complaint that mrs musgrove was very apt not to give her the precedence that was her due when they dined at the great house with other families and she did not see any reason why she was to be considered so much at home as to lose her place and one day when anne was walking with only the musgroves one of them after talking of rank people of rank and jealousy of rank said i have no scruple of observing to you how nonsensible some persons are about their place because all the world knows how easy and indifferent you are about it but i wish anybody could give mary a hint that it would be a great deal better if she were not so very tenacious especially if she would not be always putting herself forward to take place of mamma nobody doubts her right to have precedence of mamma but it would be more becoming in her not to be always insisting on it it is not that mamma cares about it the least in the world but i know it is taken notice of by many persons how was anne to set all these matters to rights she could do little more than listen patiently soften every grievance and excuse each to the other give them all hints of the forbearance necessary between such near neighbors and make those hints broadest which were meant for her sister's benefit in all other respects her visit began and proceeded very well her own spirits improved by change of place and subject by being removed three miles from kellynich mary's ailments lessened by having a constant companion 
and their daily intercourse with the other family since there was neither superior affection confidence nor employment in the cottage to be interrupted by it was rather an advantage it was certainly carried nearly as far as possible for they met every morning and hardly ever spent an evening asunder but she believed they should not have done so well without the sight of mr and mrs musgrove's respectable forms in the usual places or without the talking laughing and singing of their daughters she played a great deal better than either of the miss musgroves but having no voice no knowledge of the harp and no fond parents to sit by and fancy themselves delighted her performance was little thought of only out of civility or to refresh the others as she was well aware she knew that when she played she was giving pleasure only to herself but this was no new sensation excepting one short period of her life she had never since the age of fourteen never since the loss of her dear mother known the happiness of being listened to or encouraged by any just appreciation or real taste in music she had been always used to feel alone in the world and mr and mrs musgrove's fond partiality for their own daughter's performance and total indifference to any other person's gave her much more pleasure for their sakes than mortification for her own the party at the great house was sometimes increased by other company the neighbourhood was not large but the musgroves were visited by everybody and had more dinner parties and more callers more visitors by invitation and by chance than any other family they were more completely popular the girls were wild for dancing and the evenings ended occasionally in an unpremeditated little ball there was a family of cousins within a walk of upper cross in less affluent circumstances who depended on the musgroves for all their pleasures they would come at any time and help play at anything or dance anywhere and anne very much preferring the office of musician to a more active post played country dances to them by the hour together a kindness which always recommended her musical powers to the notice of mr and mrs musgrove more than anything else and often drew this compliment well done miss anne very well done indeed lord bless me how those little fingers of yours fly about so passed the first three weeks michaelmas came and now anne's heart must be in kellynich again a beloved home made over to others all the precious rooms and furniture groves and prospects beginning to own other eyes and other limbs she could not think of much else on the twenty ninth of september and she had this sympathetic touch in the evening from mary who on having occasion to note down the day of the month exclaimed dear me is this not the day the crofts were to come to kellynich i am glad i did not think of it before how low it makes me the crofts took possession with true naval alertness and were to be visited mary deplored the necessity for herself nobody knew how much she should suffer she should put it off as long as she could but was not easy till she had talked charles into driving her over on an early day and, and was in a very animated comfortable state of imaginary agitation when she came back anne had very sincerely rejoiced in there being no means of her going she wished however to see the crofts and was glad to be within when the visit was returned they came the master of the house was not at home but the two sisters were together and as it chanced that mrs croft fell to the share of anne while the admiral sat by mary and made himself very agreeable by his good-humoured notice of her little boys she was well able to watch for a likeness and if it failed her in the features to catch it in the voice or in the turn of sentiment and expression mrs croft though neither tall nor fat had a squareness uprightness and vigour of form which gave importance to her person she had bright dark eyes good teeth and altogether an agreeable face though her reddened and weather-beaten complexion the consequence of her having been almost as much at sea as her husband made her seem to have lived some years longer in the world than her real eight and thirty her manners were open easy and decided like one who had no distrust of herself and no doubts of what to do without any approach to coarseness however or any want of good humour anne gave her credit indeed for feelings of great consideration towards herself in all that related to kellynich and it pleased her especially as she had satisfied herself in the very first half minute in the instant even of introduction that there was not the smallest symptom of any knowledge or suspicion on mrs croft's side to give a bias of any sort 
she was quite easy on that head and consequently full of strength and courage till for a moment electrified by mrs croft suddenly saying it was you and not your sister i find that my brother had the pleasure of being acquainted with when he was in this country and hoped she had outlived the age of blushing but the age of emotion she certainly had not perhaps you may not have heard that he is married added mrs croft she could now answer as she ought and was happy to feel when mrs croft's next words explained it to be mr wentworth of whom she spoke that she had said nothing which might not do for either brother she immediately felt how reasonable it was that mrs croft should be thinking and speaking of edward and not of frederick and with shame at her own forgetfulness applied herself to the knowledge of their former neighbour's present state with proper interest the rest was all tranquillity till just as they were moving she heard the admiral say to mary we are expecting a brother of mrs croft's here soon i dare say you know him by name he was cut short by the eager attacks of the little boys clinging to him like an old friend and declaring he should not go and being too much engrossed by proposals of carrying them away in his coat pockets etc to have another moment for finishing or recollecting what he had begun anne was left to persuade herself as well as she could that the same brother must still be in question she could not however reach such a degree of certainty as not to be anxious to hear whether anything had been said on the subject at the other house where the crofts had previously been calling the folks of the great house were to spend the evening of this day at the cottage and it being now too late in the year for such a visit to be made on foot the coach was beginning to be listened for when the youngest miss musgrove walked in that she was coming to apologize and that they should have to spend the evening by themselves was the first black idea and mary was quite ready to be affronted when louisa made all right by saying that she only came on foot to leave more room for the harp which was bringing in the carriage and i will tell you our reason she added and all about it i am come to give you notice that papa and mamma are out of spirits this evening especially mamma she is thinking so much of poor richard and we agreed it would be best to have the harp for it seems to amuse her more than the pianoforte i will tell you why she is out of spirits when the crofts called this morning they called here afterwards did not they they happened to say that her brother captain wentworth is just returned to england or paid off or something and is coming to see them most directly and most unluckily it came into mamma's head when they were gone that wentworth or something very like it was the name of poor richard's captain at one time i do not know when or where but a great while before he died poor fellow and upon looking over his letters and things she found it was so and is perfectly sure that this must be the very man and her head is quite full of it and of poor richard so we must be as merry as we can that she may not be dwelling upon such gloomy things the real circumstances of this pathetic piece of family history were that the musgroves have had the ill fortune of a very troublesome hopeless son and the good fortune to lose him before he reached his twentieth year that he had been sent to sea because he was stupid and unmanageable on shore that he had been very little cared for at any time by his family though quite as much as he deserved seldom heard of and scarcely at all regretted when the intelligence of his death abroad had worked its way to uppercross two years before he had in fact though his sisters were now doing all they could for him by calling him poor richard been nothing better than a thick-headed unfeeling unprofitable dick musgrove who had never done anything to entitle himself to more than abbreviation of his name living or dead he had been several years at sea and had in the course of those removals to which all midshipmen are liable and especially such midshipmen as every captain wishes to get rid of been six months on board captain frederick wentworth's frigate the laconia and from the laconia he had under the influence of his captain written the only two letters which his father and mother had ever received from him during the whole of his absence that is to say the only two disinterested letters all the rest had been mere applications for money in each letter he had spoken well of his captain but yet so little were they in the habit of attending to such matters so unobservant and incurious were they as to the names of men or ships that it had made scarcely any impression at the time and that mrs musgrove should have been suddenly struck this very day with a recollection of the name of wentworth 
as connected with her son seemed one of those extraordinary bursts of mind which do sometimes occur she had gone to her letters and found it all as she supposed and the reperusal of these letters after so long an interval her poor son gone for ever and all the strength of his faults forgotten had affected her spirits exceedingly and thrown her into greater grief for him than she had known on first hearing of his death mr musgrove was in a lesser degree affected likewise and when they reached the cottage they were evidently in want first of being listened to anew on this subject and afterwards of all the relief which cheerful companions could give them to hear them talking so much of captain wentworth repeating his name so often puzzling over past years and at last ascertaining that it might that it probably would turn out to be the very same captain wentworth whom they recollected meeting once or twice after their coming back from clifton a very fine young man but they could not say whether it was seven or eight years ago was a new sort of trial to anne's nerves she found however that it was one to which she must inure herself since he actually was expected in the country she must teach herself to be insensible on such points and not only did it appear that he was expected and speedily but the musgroves in their warm gratitude for the kindness he had shown poor dick and very high respect for his character stamped as it was by poor dick's having been six months under his care and mentioning him in strong though not perfectly well spelt praise as a fine dashing fellow only too particular about the schoolmaster were bent on introducing themselves and seeking his acquaintance as soon as they could hear of his arrival the resolution of doing so helped to form the comfort of their evening End of chapter six recording by judy guining